All right, so hello everyone. I hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you had a, a good Halloween um, a couple of days ago. Um, today I'm joined by uh, Nick Diego, uh, Jessica Liszczyk, and Maggie Cabrera. Um, we're here to talk about the new 2024 theme, and like uh, I'm pretty excited. I will say that uh, it's. I won't give away too much if you haven't seen it. We'll wait for the presentation on that. Um, so today we're going to allow uh, Jess Jessica's going to uh, do a presentation and share some of the uh, fun things that they've built for this release. Um, and this will be coming with WordPress 6.4 uh, on November 7th. Um, for now, we're going to keep everyone muted during the presentation, but we're all uh, afterward. We'll have a Q and A, um, so you can raise your. But during the the presentation, you can also you know raise your hands or you know ask questions in the chat box. Um, we'll we'll also be sharing links throughout um, to check out. Um, but first, uh, I do want to give um, Jessica and Maggie just a chance to introduce themselves. Yeah, Maggie, you want to go first? Oh, okay. Um, my <laughs> name is Maggie. I'm from Spain. Um, I've been working at Automatic for three years. I'm working on blog themes for three years. Um, and I've contributed to 2022, 20, 23, and 24. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jessica. Um, I have been a contributor for like 10 years, I think. 10, next year, it's 10 years. Um, I just had my first day at my new job, so I work at Great now. Um, and yeah, I've been working on 2024 alongside Maggie, and it's been a blast. It was stressful sometimes, but it's been a very great time, and we, I think we did a solid job on this, if I can say so, but I, I will show you in a sec. And yeah. Um, yeah, I've also contributed to the 2023 theme with a style variation already last year. And also 2021, back in the day when we had the first underrepresented gender release with WordPress 5.6. Yep. That's great. Awesome. Um, I did want to address uh, Rich's question in the chat really quick. Uh, we have disabled a video for during the presentation. Um, just, but we will uh, enable it and audio um, later during the Q and A. So let's get to it then, uh, Jessica. I'll hand it over to you and uh, let you share what y'all have been working on. Yes. All right. I will share you my screen. You should see it now with the WordPress backend. Okay, so 2024 is coming to you next week. And um, yeah, let's circle back to uh, like June, end of May, June this year when uh, the release squad got announced. So um, And it was shortly before WordCamp Europe, and uh, that's where I met Maggie the first time. And uh, we immediately got into like, what are we going, going to do with 2024? Like, what can we do different? What can we explore or, or make, uh, make it happen? And I always thought that WordPress, um, the default themes previously just showcased a lot that, uh, WordPress was a blogging system. And over the past couple of years, I've not only I worked myself on various different websites in, in the WordPress uh, with different WordPress agencies and, and stuff. Um, and many of them were not just blogs. And I felt like hmm, there's always like just these blog focus with the default themes. Why can we make it maybe a bit different or showcase different types that you can make with a WordPress website? 
And uh, I remember just remember so clearly when I told that Maggie and she was like, yes, totally, let's do this. And uh, so great that we were on the same page for minute one, basically. So um, this made, it, made us uh, go like, okay, but none of us is a designer. Are we going to do this? So we asked around and had so many questions. And then we had um, yeah, uh, joining us kind of in, in this journey. And uh, we also told her like our ideas with the theme and what we should do with it. Uh, because as you can see here on, on the screen, most of the uh, default themes of the previous default themes are looking kind of the same from, from the basic perspective. and. How can we make this different? And Bia came up with some fantastic designs with it. And then it was just time to make it happen. So when you first install it, so this is my local environment. It looks a bit wonky, but overall, you will get a good impression on this. And um, we uh, oh. We were happy that we have various uh, or great vari variety of uh, templates and patterns that enables us not just to go with one specific um, kind of type of website, but uh, actually three. So we have like a business focused um, website. You can make a portfolio website or you can make a traditional blogging website. And um, so the patterns we have added are, I will go into these later into the uh, pattern details, but you can basically mix and match them, whatever you need for your next website. And um, let's jump into the style section, because we also have quite a few different um, style variations added. Um, we have mostly nature themed style variations that are a bit different. Um, this is the ember one that got added pretty late. More uh, muted natural colors, different fonts um, added to it. So it's basically, I think, a very nice selection to like um, see how you can get started with something. You have a dark variation, but let's stick to the default for now. Um, I had a quick question about style variations. Um, yeah, I knew I knew in twenty twenty three it was kind of community based. How was uh, how are the style variations done for 2024? So we had, originally we only had uh, this, uh, the default one, but then of course people asked like, can we like uh, add style variations to it? And there was a, we had an issue on GitHub where people could uh, yeah. jump in. Yeah, and... um, it was an unopen call for um, style variations like 2023 had. Uh, Bea, I think she designed a couple changing from serif and sans serif uh, fonts and having the the black one, the uh, dark version of the of the theme. But the rest uh, came later, like kind of organically. We had an open issue, and I, we had um, Bea made a few of them, and then Rich Tabor also contributed some of them. It wasn't like a call for um, style variations in this case, but um, they came organically during development, and I did um, ask Bea to add some more colorful ones because I was I want to use this uh, theme for my website, and I want I I dislike the black and white kind of thing, so I want colors. Yeah, that's that's what I also said. Like, it's a fantastic theme, but where are the colors? So because mm -hmm. we only had the default one, and it's like basically grays and and darker colors this dark uh, almost black color so um yeah i'm i'm pretty glad how these uh, styrations turned out i mean they're subtle sometimes 
like this one, the ice one is very, very similar, just like a more, more of a blue um, colors. But then you have like these more bold colors with like this one, for example, or I think the amber one was also this bright orange buttons here. So yeah, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good selection. Yes, let's hop on to the patterns. So we have um, 83 different patterns in total. You can see them over here. And they are very different. They have been different types uh, of patterns. Um, if you go to the uh, GitHub or download it and look into the uh, patterns folder, there are a couple more paid, uh, files in that which basically is uh, that there are um, full page templates, which is basically, let me scroll down here. So we have these patterns that are like the entire content of that site, but uh, there are additional um, files in there so we can uh, easier replace them. And I will show you how to replace the uh, default um, templates later, so like the index or the archive templates. And a few more, uh, we call them hidden patterns. These are like uh, the search bar and something like that, which is basically standardized and they're not showing up here. They're just simply hidden from like this view because like you're basically not, not very much going to use this. So, uh, but they're also there to make the uh, patterns that we have in these um, full page layouts happen. Yeah, let's go scroll to the top. I will quickly run, run through them so you can get an idea of what patterns uh, are provided. Um, so basically let's start with like these hero pattern. It's also the first one you see on, on the default um, setting and there are various different um, patterns with images, some um, with buttons. Here's a list on it. Then we have a pricing pattern or the business focused um, part, an RSVP pattern, um, a call to action that uh, um, is for like a newsletter subscription. Then we have three different footers. So we have a very minimal uh, footer with just a site logo, a menu, and Designed with WordPress paragraph, then a more advanced one with columns, and then the default one with uh, some site information here and some navigation items over there. Then we have a bunch of portfolio related um, patterns, like in full screen image or these. Um, gallery patterns, for example. So there's one with two columns, one with three columns, and one with four columns. So these are uh, placeholders for images. Basically, you need to assign um, featured images to your posts, um, and then they will show up here if you have done so. Here's another um, project layout. Uh, I think it, this one also belongs to the portfolio range. Here are the first of these like full page patterns. And as you notice, they are like, they do not have the header here um, because like there's just the content area over there. Uh, here's the portfolio, um, portfolio ones. And then we have a newsletter landing page or rather large one. Um, Project overview, another RSVP landing um, pattern. And then we have the classic post types, uh, post, um, post queries, post query patterns, this one. Um, just one column, three columns, uh, two columns, just the images, the portfolio. Um, one again, a bit different, a um, simple list of um, 
posts that we just recently added. Um, and then we have some more various patterns, a team pattern, um, a testimonial one, text with alternating images. So you can have like different showcasing different things. Yeah, statements, an FAQ pattern. I think this will be also interesting to try out for folks. And yeah, then some more text-based patterns um, within. And with all of these, you can pretty much create your own website regard uh, regarding what type of website it is. Um, one thing I want to mention is that um, there were two, at least one pattern was previously in this theme, but it has been moved to the WordPress.org pattern library and is now referenced in the theme JSON file, which means that you do not have we do not have to have it in the theme files, um, but instead the pattern just references from the library. Uh, what this means is it doesn't show up here, but it just shows up when you are uh, directly editing um, a site, then you have to go to, I think it was testimonials. Yep, there it is. That's the client's pattern and um, yeah, you can insert it from here, simply like you can insert any patterns from the library. It's just marked in the um, theme JSON file. And there's a second one, which was under services. Yeah, it's this one. It's also not in the theme. It's just referenced in the theme.json file that it's pulling from WordPress.org pattern library. So you can access it here and also use it within your, um, as pattern within your website. Would it be at all possible, not now, but to show that, uh, I'm not sure many people are familiar with that you can do that with theme.json, which is really cool that it's included in 2024 as a, as a way of doing that. You mean showing the theme.json file, like how to implement these? Yeah, just how, you know, again, not now, it's just so nice. maybe later. It's literally yeah. two lines. Yeah, it's very cool. Oh, well, I have, I have my VS code open. We can, I can just pull yeah. it over. Even if screen. you would just have the GitHub, uh, the, the repo, that would be fine. Yeah. Fine. It's basically just, I hope yeah, you can see those, it. Those, yeah. That's all you need to do, basically. So you have the theme JSON and just a pattern. Those are just the slugs yeah. of the, the, slug. the patterns yeah. in the directory. Yeah. Exactly. That's how easy it is. If there's like a pattern you find on the library, that's that's the easy way to integrate them with your theme. Yeah, I'm 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 going to link in the chat uh, here. Um, I this literally got published here in the last couple of weeks. There is now documentation on how to do that. So definitely check it out. Cool. Um, yeah, I want to also show you something specific that has been quite of a discussion topic during development. And we had a lot of different ways. How do we want to, um, how do we want to make this happen? Which is these asterisk icons over here. And there was a lot of discussion, like how we can we make them appear because we do not have a default icon block. Maybe that's something for the future, hopefully someone sometime, or Nick has something for yeah. you <laughs> yeah. there as well. But we need to rely on what the um, what the core is, uh, what is available at the core. So it's not just we can like pull in an external plugin just for this. So um, Bia created these wonderful uh, designs with the with these icons, and we ended up uh, doing a um, different style style for the headings for the heading block. So basically, when you go with the default 
it's just like always the heading block. And you know that from the image block, for example, or what other blocks do these have? There are various ones, the button block, for example, as well. And uh, this is how we implemented this also in an accessible way. So there have been um, suggestions yeah. to make it different that we're just inaccessible because the this icon would have been announced to screen readers. And that's not something that we, you want because it's basically just a decorative item. And yeah, that's how you can make these. Uh, that's the way how you can make these asterisks appear above a headline. Um, let me check my notes. Yeah, now you're probably wondering, well, I have these. So there are these different types of websites you can make. There are uh, portfolio and, and blogging. And this is the business one that is uh, on by default. So you get these as first one. How can you actually replace this one with uh, something different? And um, let's hop over to the archives. Nope, let's, which one was it? Uh, let's let's not use the index. Let's let's stick to the block home. Maybe I think that's a bit easier there. So when you're having this whole page, um, what you do not need to do is like to delete all these blocks and then just puzzle your new layout together. You can of course do this, but there is a um, easier function to completely replace this in one go. And this can be currently found uh, when you are here in the um, template section in the sidebar. And over here at the uh, actions item, it's called replace template. And what it does, it opens a new um, modal and takes a few seconds to load, but essentially it showcases you what else can you put on there. And I think we're going for the portfolio one because it's the more uh, different one from all of these. And when you click on it and give it a few seconds, the entire content of this template gets replaced in one go. So you do not have to like manually uh, delete all the blocks and just have it. And when I now save it, you can go to front end and it's just like basically there and added and that's how you can like work on with uh, these templates basically yep i think that's it wait a second i want to go back here yeah i would add that also um if you're creating a new page, you will get suggestions from oh, within yeah. the full page patterns that we have. Same with when you're create, creating a new template. If, for example, you want to create a specific, um, you have maybe a category that is um, art posts, and you want the archive of those to be different, it will you will get a pop-up uh, like this one, showing how you're getting all the, all the warnings. It's all being broken because it's a development environment. <laughs> Oops, yeah, that's what just what happens. But basically, yeah. you would see these close to what you've seen before uh, when I change the template. Um, this is like just creating a new page. Give it a few seconds um, to load. Maybe just my machine that is a bit slow on this one as well. Um, but yeah, I think it's, as you said, it's the same with uh, templates. Let's have a quick look at these as well. So when we go to manage and we will create, uh, what are we going to create? Let's go for a single post. Yeah, so basically the same happens over here. There are two different types. This one is the portfolio one uh, with just the like uh, 
featured image and this one is like the regular post um, post type one. So let's pick this one and there you go. Everything there and then you can make your own edits. If you want to replace the header or the footer, it's all up to you from this point on. Yes, and one last thing I want to um, show to you is the um, functions.php, which is, let's move this one over here again. Let's make it a bit bigger so you can see this a bit better. So basically, 2024 comes with a functions PHP file again. 2023 did not. And um, what the functions PHP does for the theme is basically two things. One is um, adding some more block styles to certain blocks. So for example, we have at the um, button block, we have this outlined um, style, I, uh, which I loads think this, in. The, this, this, this one shouldn't be, it's not really a block style, is it? It's just um, CSS for the button, button outline. But you can I don't like, remember. You can like select it, I think. Yeah, but it's not something, it's not like the um, details one where you can uncheck it and it will be removed. It's just CSS yeah. that's built on top of it. Yeah, that's uh, the first one's a block style sheet. Is yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To kind of differentiate between block styles and block style sheets. <laughs> the, the, the yeah, terminology. they're different. Yeah. So it just yeah, said we, the we're, wrong name. We're putting them all the, on the same function and they're not the same thing. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It might be confusing. Maybe we should add like a comment or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll link to uh documentation on, on both of the no, cool. they're not, yeah. not published yet. Uh, I'm hoping to get them published mm -hmm. this week. We do have documentation coming on both of the, these features, by the way. That's good because everyone gets confused, even me. So don't worry. Um, yeah, but basically, we have some more um CSS added through these um through the functions PHP file. And just quickly scrolling over, here's a famous asterisk um, one. And the second one is that we added a um, pattern category. Maybe you have spotted it before. Um, and this just adds a, another pattern category. And that's, that's basically it. It doesn't do anything more than uh, these few functions. And mm. when I hop back to... So it's over here. I think it's this one and the other one when you are in yeah, the editor. The in the inserter, it basically adds this um, category in here. That's all the function PHP does. All right. So I think that's it from me now. Just a quick right. little introduction. Well, thank you, uh, Jessica. <laughs> That was, uh, was great to see. Um, I knew personally this is probably the most excited I've been about uh, a default theme in a long time. And uh, I mean, I'm always excited just because I like theming, but but uh, this is the <laughs> most excited. Um, so uh, Nick, do we want to go ahead and open up the... Um, the chat to anybody who does want to join in, like uh, the the boys speaking, if they want to join in video. We can. We do have a lot of people here, so I want to make sure we're we yeah. are staying on topic. Mm -hmm. um, we have answered quite a few questions, but one of the things that has come up was, you know, kind of around. Well, uh, maybe this is my own question. 2023 <laughs> did not include a 2023 did not include a functions.php file. And you went over the functions.php file that is in 2024, which is fantastic. And when we think about like 
best practices and, you know, these core themes kind of set the standard for people who are learning how to build block themes, looking ahead, they will use this as an example uh, to implement things themselves. And I think that there are so many great examples in that functions.php file that you all have implemented that maybe people didn't know about. Custom mm -hmm. block style sheet, implementing block styles, so on and so forth. Back to the question in the chat was around uh, fluid, or sorry, uh, responsive sizes for fonts. And I'm wondering if it might be worthwhile just to do a really brief overview of some of the features that are that this theme supports in the theme.json file. Hmm. Fluid typography, fluid spacing, things like that, which maybe some of us are very familiar with, but maybe some of the folks in the chat, this is new to them um, hmm. because the way we build block themes is a little bit different than classic themes or how other page builders build things. Yes, I wanted to say something. It. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Maggie. Go ahead. I just wanted to make um, a point about the functions PHP file because I've uh, I don't I didn't know that it was such a controversial thing that twenty twenty three didn't have one, um, but I think it's really interesting to talk about because I think um, as best practices for block themes, either having it or not having it could be a best practice. Like I don't think twenty twenty three needs it. Uh, I don't think any block theme particularly needs it. And also mm, 2023 was built um, kind of like a foundational kind of theme, very simplified, very basic to be built on top of. Uh, so if you wanna use, um, you can add your functions PHP to it if you want, or you can make a, a child theme that has a functions PHP file. But the theme itself, the way it was built, didn't really need it. But in our case, we found out that we wanted one because we wanted to add block styles and we, um, 2024 is opinionated and has um, this very specific kind of way of building itself. It's not meant to be a bare bones theme at all. Um, it has opinion and it has um, things. So it needs um, to add those via functions BP in, in, in this case, while still keeping it very streamlined and very, simple for a block theme because it doesn't really need to add functionality or anything but we have these tools like like you said that we are making use of like we, we can add block styles this is how so people can see them but it's kind of uh, we don't i don't think we build default themes or we didn't build 2024 trying to showcase every single thing that you can do with wordpress but we when we found things in the design that call for this kind of stuff we definitely lean on those best practices and we try to showcase them, uh, com uh, also documenting them as much as we could so people can actually see, hey, I can do this this way. I can implement this on my theme or even on 2024 or not child theme or Yeah, cool. Uh... Maybe I just share my screen again so we can quickly have a run through of uh, the theme JSON yeah. file. Uh, let's. I can. Think this. You already showed um, how you can load a block pattern from the block directory, which is something that is new for a default theme. Um, yep. So again, it's this part here, just patterns, yeah. and just add the slugs. Yeah, um, we are adding duoton and gradients for every single uh, default, every single variation. Those are not the default ones. Those are ones that come for the theme. Yes, um, there are quite a few. Thank Rich for, for adding those. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically the way the we colored... named the, the colors was also something that we discussed quite a bit because um, there's no, as we all know, there's no, oh. Um, default way to name the colors. So we went this way when other block, other default themes have gone different routes. Um, so until we have like um, a way that comes from core to decide how colors should be named or how they could be represented so that you keep the contrast between them. This is um, what we came with, uh, with all these limitations. Um, uh, as far as colors, oh, sorry. Uh, I just want to, as far as colors go, we are still kind of leaning on like base and contrast, right? So, 
Yes. Um, just yes. as an accent, not actual standards, but de facto no. standards in a way. Um, just uh, I think it helps if most themes can use those two, uh, at least those two for the uh, base mm. for the background and contrast for the uh, text color. Um, mm. I understand that um, different themes or different websites will have different needs. So, yeah, I don't think this is also, uh, this is um, a nice default for people to follow, but it's probably not going to be um, a solution for everyone unless until we have something coming from Coralize or um, streamline, sure, especially, especially if you're working with patterns from the blog directory and things like that. Yeah. I'm sure we can get rich on the to tell us all about color groups or colorways or whatever they may be called. Yeah, Rich is already talking on on chat. <laughs> yeah, so we some of the star variations do not have like all of these. Um, yeah, all the same. Uh, yeah, colors the in the palette. Colors, yeah. yeah, exactly. So they are with the, even within the star variations, they are not like five X in colors every time or two mm. or three. We have three base and three contrast yeah. colors, so. Some of them are even more limited. Um, yeah, let's those, hop onto these the spacings. spacing, uh, the spacings, which are, um, yeah, down to six. We just mm -hmm. had an issue recent, very recently. I think last week or this week, someone, uh, someone asking about more uh, spacings, and mm -hmm. uh, if you stick to six, I think is six is the like. I think it's seven maximum. Six or seven, I think it's seven. Yeah. yeah. To have this, um, like this, the slider, slider kind of thing where you can choose the spacing instead of like manually typing like in, a drop uh, down, yeah, or a drop. It it shows a drop down instead of, instead of the really neat slider with all yeah. the stop gaps. Yeah. So basically, that's uh, the spacing. I think Rich came up with the spacing. Uh, uh yeah, spacing yeah. things one so. I'm not the one to ask about this. I I actually I actually had to change the first one because the first uh the number number one was also dynamic, and in on mobile was so small that it was oh yeah like I remember mm -hmm. so I I made it static for us um it was looking really bad on mobile but yeah yeah so it's not just fixed okay the the lowest one is like fixed uh to mm -hmm. one rem and then the other ones have like. I think it's min and kind of minimum this. Yeah, and maximum the minimum this. Of the two. Yeah. So there you have like some fancy CSS stuff going on here. And yeah, then we have the fonts. So which... some a uh, few people were asking about the fonts. They are font. Uh, they are Google fonts, but we load them on the. On the we bundle them on the theme they are loaded from your theme they're not loaded from google exactly and we yeah it's the same is the same thing as um 2022 i think it also has um yeah they all have also bundles fonts 2023 uses only system fonts i believe but 2022 does uh bundle some some um fonts with it the older fonts uh, the older default themes do that too uh, in the meantime, so there has been a, I was part of uh, making this happen, so that's why I know. Uh, so every default theme now has, uh, pre default themes that previously loaded directly from Google Fonts have now uh, serve, serve us now serving the fonts uh, locally from the theme files. Yes. Um, it's been a change like early in the beginning of the year already, yeah. so. Um. I yeah. last I checked, you you couldn't get the WAF two file formats when downloading directly from Google, or I don't know if that's changed. Or do you all use no? That you could not. You could not. We had to oh. um, get them from elsewhere. I don't remember. Yeah, okay. uh, I think they're not just Google fonts. They are on Google fonts, but we got the WAF from somewhere else. Okay, so I think someone converted you, it. I think also, you, one uh, thing that sorry. I, this uh, talking about formats remind me that um, this is the first de default theme that uses WebP as a format for the images that are bundled with the theme. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, which could cause some, a few uh, issues uh, when we move to SVN, but <laughs> everything's working now. 
Yeah, I was just wanted to mention that a lot of the Google fonts I'll have GitHub repositories, which have like True. all the other True. formats yeah. that you might not immediately be able to get from Google. So. Yeah. And I will say like, like the WAF2 format is like, I don't know, like 95% at least browser, you know, supported. I mean, it's, uh, so you don't need a bunch of different formats like in the past. Um, so that's great. But I'm, I didn't realize y'all were using WebP for images. Um, yes. That's a, yeah, that's a change I've recently made for, you know, my own theming. So that's great to see it in uh, a core theme. Um, yeah. Real quick, I don't want to backtrack us too much, but I'm going to share Justin's article on uh, intrinsic design, um, which talks a bit more about that fluid spacing, fluid typography, um, yeah. which is now being used in all the core themes. So if anybody's thinking about that and hasn't explored it yet, check out the article. It's a good one. Thank you. And maybe one last thing about fonts is that we have also added um, system font stacks to yeah. ev to the default theme JSON as well as every style variation that has uh, custom fonts or oh, not custom fonts but like changes the fonts so we had to like, redeclare them so if you do not want to use um, fonts that are loading files you can just fall back to or select directly from the editor that you want to use this uh, system fonts and it's already there. Yeah, and for the font sizes, yeah, that's yeah, where we you have can these, see the fluid all the ones. font sizes are fluid. Yeah. Yes, the smaller ones are not fluid because um, they are already way small. You don't want to make them yeah smaller. So yeah, so it's like the three big ones have like this min and max and the fluid attribute. Yeah, that's basically it. Well, the yep. fluid fonts. Yeah. Go I ahead. have another question, and I don't want to distract us from theme.json, but I absolutely loved how you all implemented the FAQ um, arrow, excuse me, uh, design for the block style. Um, at some point, oh. if you could just show that, because I think it like. Yeah. They yeah, provide the people like a lot of yeah. inspiration on what you can do with a block style, which is really cool to see in a in a default theme. Yeah. Just have to find it. There it is. Okay. Yeah, we have a few of those. I think most of our variations are basically that. We also have a, a one for the list uh style block that has check marks instead of like the dot kind of thing. Okay. Oh, cool. Um and we also have one. Which one was it? Oh, I can remember. And this one moves. So when you open the arrow, moves. Yeah. yeah so the arrow now cool. points here at the question, whereas when yeah. it's closed, it's pointing down. Yeah. Yeah, and it's basically not just anything specific. I, I think I think the color of it is um yeah, because it's a font. Yeah. yeah. The color will change if you change the color of the block. You can try it. Sure, hopefully. <laughs> Let's make testing. it a boom. There you go. So yeah, the arrow changes the color itself as well. Yeah. Would you be hopefully, able to show yeah. the code how that how, how that worked? Because I don't think people necessarily yeah. realize how how easily you can like extend yeah. or modify core blocks like that. Yeah. Um, that's on functions php yeah it's I'll, in a functions i will right? add yeah i'll add to that uh we do have this on the list for the developer blog uh for an article on how to extend specifically the uh, details of summary block um which can mm -hmm. be applied to other blocks of, of, uh, too. that's the one yep yeah so it basically just so, adds some inline styles um, yeah, padding. are adding yeah. a border bottom to the. Uh, um... Oh yeah, that's the entire details block. Yes, and basically yeah. the arrows are this style type. Yes, this, they uh, are. Yeah, the property, and then you just have these. The code for the actual the... Uh, glyph. That's like yeah. it's basically a glyph, in this yeah. case. Uh, yeah, same with the check mark, I believe. Yeah, and I had no idea that was possible. Mm -hmm. It was very cool when I saw that. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. The check mark is just the code for the glyph and then uh, some padding for it. Yeah, and I think it also repeats. No, it does not repeat here. Oh, navigation links. There's a. It's a. Um. It. It's very subtle. I think it's only showing on the sidebar for the plugin theme. So you can add um the variation for the navigation link, and here, add yeah. like this um icon at the end of the link, um which is a little arrow in a box. Um, can you uh, open? Yeah. The blogging, the one with the sidebar. One with the sidebar. Yes, Do the home blogging. Uh, yeah, I need to. If you create back. a post, you can select, which is something we can also show. Oh, yeah, that, that one. That will work. Yes. So you're ta yes. Maggie's that, talking exactly. about these. Uh, yes. Sorry about that. He's talking about <laughs> these little arrows here. At the yes, that is also links. a block style. You can yeah. switch it on or off. That is a navigation block. Yeah, that's all. I also don't think that we've highlighted that this is the first block theme with with a column columned uh, layout. Uh, um, no, I don't think so. I think uh, 2022 had a pattern for it. Oh, it did? Okay. I, I, may, I might be wrong, but I think we did have one. I don't know. I, I might be wrong. But yeah, I'm very happy that we... I'm, I'm using the one with the sidebar. <laughs> I'm old school like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people who love the sidebar, so I'm I'm happy that we include one. We have the version without it, but you can choose between it. I wanted to um I think there was a question about accessibility. Um when yeah. I, I can't I, I the chat's gotten so long now I, I don't know yeah. where it was at. But um I think the question was We've around got... whether the theme is accessibility ready. Um, I don't so think, I knew, yeah. We've had um, a lot of people auditing the theme for accessibility. And from what I know, all default themes need to have the accessibility ready tag. Um, I should have, I should check again with Carolina to see we've not missed anything, but if we've missed something, we will get it done before the release so that the theme is accessibility ready. It should, uh, all default themes should be accessibility ready. And we've yeah, been working so the... hard. Um, to make it so. Yeah, so the style variations have been checked before, but maybe we need to get safe, uh, go safe and do a, do a check again, just to make sure like we haven't missed anything yeah. that maybe was done, uh, changed later after the first checks have been done. Yeah. So in general, it should be accessibility ready. Yes. Uh, we should we'll maybe definitely... add the tag because we don't have it. We didn't add we the tag, add it. so we should add it. Yeah, make sure that we are that it's um, everything's um, cool with yeah. that. That's awesome. Um, I did have a question of my own. I, I know how to do it, but um, I think maybe there the some people may not. Um, is how to create a hidden pattern. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. Um, there are some hidden patterns. Uh, how they do not show in the uh, the sidebar or in, in the inserter. Um, just in case, like other people, you know, do not know how to, you know, register that. Yes. Let's hop into the patterns and pick one. Yeah, let's go for the no results one. That's fairly easy. So basically what you do is uh, you have to call it with hidden in front. I remember correctly. Well, you no, no, no. That's um. um okay, that's just the for name of like the pattern. sorting. Yeah, yeah. That was basically our name naming convention for um to make it clear for everyone that that was a hidden pattern. Okay. But the only thing, the only line, the only thing you need is line five. That's the only yeah. thing you need. That's insert a. No, is the thing how to make it disappear from, the patterns. It's as easy as that. Yeah, the, the reason, one of the reasons why we use hidden patterns are because this is the only way to translate some of the strings. Like you see here, the no posts were found that needs to be translated for uh, other languages. And right now, um, templates that have text on them, those strings don't get translated. So making them a pattern is the way. So we hide them because they are not useful for the 
uh, for the end user. They will just see the content like in the website. Exactly. I, this that's one of my favorite uses of patterns now, and uh, yeah, I haven't seen it used by many themes. So, uh, you know, outside of like the core themes, and I just uh, I think it's one of those neat tricks that not a lot of people will know about. So, mm -hmm. thanks, thank you for sharing that. Um, do we have any? Yeah, other I think an, an, another thing that. Um... I've not seen many themes do. It's um, have patterns load um, only when you want them, especially full page patterns, like the way we have um, patterns for the archive page. We don't want it to show when you're creating a new page because it has um, the query loop and stuff that's specific for an archive page. And you have the query title, you don't want that in like a regular page. So by changing the template types that you see on line five, uh, this pattern will only show when you create a new archive category tag author on the um, template. So it will not show when you create a new page. It will not show in the inserter. It will only show when you, um, when you are creating a template. That is one of those. And also um, a way to show, the way to show the full page patterns when you are creating a new page. If you go to um, the RSVP one. RSVP, this one? I believe, yeah, I think so. Yes. So you see on block types, you see core post content. The, the, the patterns that have that specific line um, will show when you're creating a new page. Is it a new page or a new post? Sorry, I had it at pages it before. Yeah, uh, because it's when a I post opened types, the pages. A page. Yes. Yeah. The post types below it, you can define what you want it to show up on. So it looks like it's page and template. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, There's a, there's a lot of features in here in 2024 yes. that we've talked yes. about in random blog posts and whatnot. It all comes together in this theme, which is really cool. Mm. So many is there anything things that like... didn't... Oh, go for it. Yeah, like the aspect ratio on um, uh, feature images and all that. Um, that was Those are things that are coming on this release that were not working before. Um, in fact, this is that's one of the reasons why uh, 2024 requires 6.4, and it doesn't. It works on 6.3, but we'll have some blocks that will uh, give you some errors. So that's why we're requiring 6.4. You were saying? Oh, um, tough question. Is there anything that didn't make it into this theme that you like to see in six in the 2025? Uh, Things that maybe just didn't work because the feet functionality wasn't there yet for 6.4, but it's coming at 6.5. Uh, nothing big, but I think there's we're still missing um, a proper way to um, to build sites that are that don't have a home page, a front page that is not fully for blogs, and that came up like last week, uh, well early this week. Um, where our the the query block that we had on the homepage um, was not paginating correctly because it wasn't it wasn't inheriting from the template and it, because the main page is not a it's not a block the main the front page is not a block so yeah I think we need to work on that and also the the flows for template swapping need a little are a little work I know that. People are working on those, and hopefully for six point five, they will be they will be more prominent in the UI, changing between all those variations. Which I hope um, having twenty twenty four as an example will make that other uh, themers will use that kind of um, ability, and it will become more popular. So having that flow more prominent um, will also help with the users and knowing how many things they have, how many. Um, alternatives they have for the template that, are, that they are currently viewing, which is something that is not easy to see right now. But I think um, the original design um, was mainly unchanged. There were a few 
times where some of the things were touch and go, like the asterisk at some point was in risk of actually disappearing. <laughs> but uh, hopefully we made it work. Um, so yeah, I think that the editor is in such a nice um, place compared to where it was when we were building 2021 blocks and trying to have the same functionality work on a blog team and everything, and everything was missing. And now yeah. we have so many things that we can have like this very opinionated uh, theme with lots of cool things for the design that actually work as a blog theme and you don't need to write like a ton of CSS. Yeah, yeah. maybe some one, one little thing that I think could have a big impact on WordPress and any website overall is like hover styles or hover active oh, focus yeah, yeah, styles. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, these were like, we had to like turn down one design suggestion to have it uh, changing the colors basically um, because the editor can't handle this at the moment, probably for buttons, mm. at least it was the case. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I do know we're running uh, up on time and I do want to apologize to some of the uh, people in the chat that I'm sure we've missed uh, a few questions. Um, and you can always, uh, if you want to, you can feel free to ping me or Nick for sure. Um, and hopefully Meg and Jessica uh, will, uh, will also um, invite you to ping them too. Um, I didn't want to speak on their path, but I think I'm, I, I can say Nick and I both uh, will because that's our job uh, is to um, talk with developers and help answer questions. Um, yeah, so, absolutely. Like ask whatever, just DM. At least for me, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um. So if you do have further questions that we uh, were not able to get to today, um, uh, definitely let us know. Um, and we'll be happy to answer. Uh as quickly as we can. I did have a few announcements before we wrap things up. I meant to do these early in the show, sorry. Um, <laughs> so uh, first thing, we do have a couple of new uh, chapters in the theme handbook. Um, and I will link them here in the uh, chat. Um, one is for like a complete guide for theme JSON or global settings and styles. Um, so like uh, th these are just published in the last couple of weeks. Uh, there's a new templates chapter, uh, which uh, all of the uh, theme handbook chapters are going to be uh, block first going forward. We'll still have a classic chapter within the handbook, um, but so these new updates will be primarily geared toward uh, block theming. And uh, we have, Three more new chapters on the way soon, I hope. Um, so keep an eye out for those. Please check the uh, new content out. Um, what was the, we had another announcement. Um, oh yeah, WordPress 6.4. It is coming out on November 7th. And um, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, not just because of the uh, 2024 thing, but that's probably the thing I'm most excited about. Um, uh, RC3 was just released, uh, I think it was yesterday. Um, yes. Yeah. So if you're a plugin or theme developer, definitely test, test please, and uh, and update any, uh, uh, any plugins or things you have if needed. And if you're not a plugin or theme developer, please test anyway and, uh, you know, leave feedback. Um, I do. Uh, I want to just give an opportunity for you know Nick, Jessica, or Maggie to any final thoughts. Uh, Not really. Uh, yeah, thanks thank for having me. Support. I think yeah. I'm just going to give uh, one. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Nick. Just, go ahead. Uh, just one final plug. So we do these developer hours every month. This one was originally. This is technically October's developer hours. Um, so we are going to have another event this month. It is not published yet, but it is going to be on November 30th. And it's going to be about how to extend core block, core WordPress blocks. Um, so stay tuned for that. There'll be an announcement, all the things. Um, but our next event will be on November 30th.
I'm glad you mentioned that one. I almost, I, I definitely <laughs> forget. It's in our, it's in our list, but I forgot. Um, so thank you, uh, Jessica and Maggie, for coming on and I was, and talking about 2024. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I wish we had another two hours to just comb through the theme. There's so many exciting things. Um, and thank you all for uh, joining us. Um, and the great questions. And I look forward to seeing you all at the next developer hours. All right. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.